All right, so I was on Reddit, by the way, horrible website, by the way, but I was on the RS2 Vietnam Reddit page and I saw this photo and uh, it was it was truly a masterpiece. But, but of course, of course, Anthony somehow managed to get his hands on a Dushka as an Australian pilot. Wouldn't have actually expected anyone else to have done it, but I read the comment, right, and how they managed to go behind enemy lines and steal this complex piece of Vietnamese tech and it made me realize that I hadn't made a you know a tips and tricks video in a you know in a good while and so I thought why not make another one but uh, this is more or less to help you guys stop being <laughs> stop being called a bot by Anthony because I uh, he he does do that at times so uh yeah, just helping you guys out. All right, but you know, before we actually go out into the rice fields, the first thing that I want you to do is like, uh, th this might sound a little dodgy, but for starters, make sure you don't wear any clothing that exposes your bare skin. Obviously, if you're like a level 99 absolute sick cunt, then uh, it doesn't really matter. But I mean, if you're just starting off, you want to make sure that, well, for starters, and don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean this in any offensive way, but you want to make sure that your character has the uh, darkest skin color, specifically black. Y you want to be black. Like, I'm just going to say, because you're basically camouflaged and uh, a lot harder to see sometimes on night maps I just I, I just completely don't see the black person at all they just blend in but I mean it actually does work that's not even a joke and then another thing is I want you to go into the settings to make sure that your foliage foliage I don't know how to pronounce that is basically set to the lowest setting basically means that all these like trees and grass and shit won't spawn and sort of obstruct your vision sure if you want the game to look freaking beautiful then I mean you can leave it up high but I mean if you want to actually play to get good you want to make sure that that setting is turned to the lowest and then one more setting that you want to do is that this is setting I can't think of it at the top of my head but basically you set it and it's like you have a wider field not field of view but it's like when you turn your head right you can't tell if it's a friendly or an enemy because there's no blue indicator but basically this extends it out so that the indicator is still there even if you're not directly looking at someone it's it's just such a helpful thing I'll probably put it up on screen because I couldn't actually find the setting at all when I was trying to write the script for this But I know that it's a thing. I swear to God. All right, but let's say, you know, you're a Vietnamese squad leader So what I want you to do is instead of actually digging a squad actually where I should rephrase that You should always dig a squad tunnel But when you do I want you to press Z right as you start digging because this will actually cancel out the digging animation Now there are lots of pros to this basically There's no sound especially if you're playing on certain maps where you get behind enemy lines and you want to put a secret tunnel down they, they can't hear you digging it because there have been times where, which I'll go on to a little later on where I can hear where the enemy is just by hearing the sounds and if I hear digging sounds I'm gonna go towards the sound obviously you're vulnerable you're digging and obviously we know that animation speeds are a little dodgy in this game or cancelling or starting animation so you're gonna be stuck and I'm gonna get the drop off you like every single time this happens and I mean to be absolutely honest I owe this to Tyrone because he actually DM'd me on discord ages ago telling me about this so I just want to to say thank you to him for telling me this but leading on from that sound point I want you guys to always wear headphones if you can obviously headphones can be expensive I use fucking Razer headphones and Duckman Walrus on Discord said that oh yeah you know Razer my Razer headset started breaking and I'm like yeah yeah sure mate and it, it, it happened to me literally I've only had these for a couple of months and it's already starting to break but you want to have headphones you can have speakers but headphones you have a lot of advantages such as being able to to hear the general direction of where, you know, helicopters are coming from. You are able to pinpoint where enemies are. We know that for some reason the character thinks it's a good idea to open their goddamn mouth in the worst possible situations and get themselves killed. But yeah, you know, if you can invest in some headphones, that would be greatly appreciated. I don't know why I'm greatly appreciated. I mean, your teammates will thank you if you're being more aware of your surroundings. Because, you know, I act like a freaking bat. I use, like, echolocation. That's, that's not what echolocation is. But I'm, like, able to hear movement, gunshots. I'm able to identify clearly the difference between gunshots, and then I'm able to run in the general direction of where they're coming from. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, but basically, when you spot or when you press the Z key, your character will say something right and it depends on like what they're pointing at like let's say if they see an RPG or machine gunner or sniper and you press Z on them your character will actually say it so th this could be helpful saying like you know let's say someone's on the ridge and you can't really 
shoot them clearly, you pinpoint them, you can say, oh, sniper spotted, and then you can relay back that to, you know, to your teammates, or your teammates can hear you say it. Now, obviously, if you're playing as ARVN, or PAVN, or Vietnamese, then, you know, the voice lines are going to be different, so you probably want to pick up a dictionary or something, so you actually can understand, you know, what you're pointing at. Now, I want to talk about my general loadout, and what weapons I prefer to use. Now, it might seem wise to adjust your weapons based on the circumstance, which that is a good strategy, such as, you know, if you're playing on Hue City, it might be better to use an M16 or M1 carbine because these weapons do well at close range. And if you are on a map such as Firebase Georgina, it might make sense to use a gun more tailored for longer ranges like the M14 or Maz-49. Well, if you're playing the PAVN, you know, you should, I advise you use the AKM, it's a good gun. But what I do is, right, nine out of 10 times, I will pick the infantry class. And this is if I want to absolutely sweat my ass off. Like, I don't care if it's free weekend and I have to nerf myself to be nice to the noobs. If I want to pull every exploit and every shit move out. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't do this. I should probably rephrase that. But, you know, basically, I don't want to play fair. Okay, well, I, I, I always phrase this wrong. You want to play fair, but, like, if I want to just absolutely sweat myself, I will always use the M14. And if I'm playing as the United States Marine Corps, they get the M14 with the Scout class, or Recon class, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I'd use, because obviously the Scout class is better than the Infantry class, especially if you can get the M14 in it. But I'd always take a weapon that can one one shot over anything else because obviously you know when you get to the point of you know being able to land shots consistently you don't want to make sure that oh did I hit them did I need to put another bullet in them you just tap and forget that's it that's why I advise you always pick you know if you're if you're not a complete noob you want to sort of use the M14 Maz 49 L1A1 and M1 Grand now another piece of advice I want to give you guys wasn't actually pointed out in my traps tier list video until someone commented so thank you a lot basically each grenade has a unique sound now obviously if you hear a grenade run, you should run, but uh, <laughs> each grenade do have their own unique sounds, which I'll play on screen for you. Now, I don't know how this can have a tactical advantage, because obviously, like I said, if you hear a grenade, you should run. But, I mean, yeah, now you know. And, uh, my last piece of advice for you guys is, uh, if you are playing as a sniper, and you have the XM21, or I just call this a scoped M14, I don't care. If you pick the suppressed variant of the weapon, I will personally bully you, and everyone else in the server will bully you. Just don't. Just, just don't pick the suppressed. Please, just don't. Because while it might sound good, you know, you get no muzzle flash, enemies can't hear you too well unless they get within a certain range. The leading is so shit on this, I, I can't lead the target. Sometimes I aim directly at a target that's standing still at range, and, and I fucking miss, okay? Just use the, the non-suppressed version, it's so much easier. It's just like using an M14 with a scope, really. Like, please don't use the suppressed version. But anyways, I'm gonna leave today's video there. If you guys have any more tips and tricks that you'd like to add to this video, that would be greatly appreciated. Just leave it down in the comment section. Oh my god, I'm gonna sneeze. Anyways, I'm gonna leave today's video there. My name is Tantu. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And wait, fuck, how do I do my outro? My name is Tantu, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.